both Brian's have mentioned uh, uh, agronomic characters and uh, herbicides to use. The next comes is uh, the research update, uh, canola, the way we are growing and the way we are in here. Uh, it is prone to a lot of diseases. Uh, we are trying our best to keep up with, and uh, we are trying to present the research on various diseases, what we have seen in 2023 season. Uh, so the canola projects, uh, my intention is to show the audience like what the projects we do over here at the research center over here in uh, Langdon. Uh, the topmost disease all over the states is black leg and then white mold, uh, followed by in um, eastern part of uh, Cavalier County is club root. And recently in 2021, we have added verticillium stripe and uh, we, we are um, monitoring its disease. I have uh, mentioned all the projects for each of these uh, diseases. If anybody is interested uh, in the audience, they can collaborate with me and I will be happy to help you, with you guys in any uh, disease to work with in future. Uh, first of all, for the past two years, uh, the, this is the one which is most concerned for us, you know, the weather. Uh, in general, see on the right top um, graph, which I got from the US um, weather forecasting system on uh, uh, average in May, June and July, August, that is our uh, important canola growing season. We need, we are supposed to receive over uh, about two inches in May, then in June, go close to four inches, and then in July, uh, three inches, so on. Okay, uh, look at the, the left side top uh, um, picture where, where we are, what we are receiving. It's less than, uh, less or just over 0.5 inch in May where we are supposed to re uh, receive over two inches. And uh, in June, it's uh, pathetic. And in July, we had a little bit of um, around two inches. So that's saved our crop. And um, the picture top, uh, uh, right, the bottom right side, you see this picture? These are my canola trials. Uh, I was uh, all uh, during uh, entire uh, crop uh, period during uh, 2023 crop season, I was watching rain somewhere way behind or very close to me. It's raining there, but not on my research trials. Fortunately, I have a irrigation uh, facility in our research center, like a supplemental irrigation to develop more disease. Probably that has saved my trials. And uh, we just were uh, got out of with good results um, in 2023 season. The top mode disease, again, I mentioned is black leg. Um, here it starts with um, um, inoculum in infestations or in uh, inoculum uh, falls on the canidia or two to four leaf stage of canola. And it starts infections over here in the on the leaf. And then they move to the um, above, downwards and uh, at the collar region, they cause uh, stem cankers. So this is the one which is a major one which can cause a lot of yield losses in our area. So for this, um, for uh, black leg, mostly we do um, uh, varietal resistance. You know, we have a very good um, resistant varieties available from various companies. We have, uh, our um, farmers are very well aware of uh, this thing, like they have to rotate the varieties, so, so on to avoid the uh, most virulent strains of um, black leg. It is continuously um, uh, mutating and it provide, it is producing more uh, pathogenicity groups, according to Dr. Deltrio's lab work. Uh, so when uh, there is a thing called, when you use a resistant variety and uh, you use a black leg uh, C treatment of a fungicide, uh, it would uh, um, allow the resistance of the variety to sustain for a little longer years. We just heard a, um, Dr. Jenks mentioned that uh, Liberty, uh, if you use go on using every other year, there is a spell. Uh, in seven years, we may not uh, uh, be using Liberty anymore. The same way here also. Every year you use uh, the same variety, the different varieties with the different pathogenicity groups. And uh, these pathogenicity so groups are mutating. So what to do to save those? Like um, add one fungicide um, seed treatment like this and uh, so try and uh, probably we can meet. 
uh, keep the variety a little longer than usual. Uh, for my main intention was that, and also we have a couple of new chemical uh, chemicals, uh, seed treatments that has been introduced in Canada, and uh, they are claiming that they are very good. This is Vercoras. It, it has a four fungicides in it, fluopyram and fluoxapyroxide from group seven, metalaxyl from group four, and pyroclostrobin from group 11. So they, um, it, it has four uh, uh, fungicide uh, C treatments in it, and you can see my yields over 3,485 pounds per acre. Although although it's a 100 square feet um, uh, square feet plot and uh, small plot research, we can show them that much of uh, results. But uh, when you compare with other uh, uh, C treatment, you see those um, uh, yields over here. Uh, Saltro, it's a 5 flumetofen again a group 7, it's another thing the, um, the Canadians are claiming it's working so good in there. That's what I wanted to test in our uh, uh, in our location and um, it, it did provide good uh, results in terms of yield but um, you know, well, when you compare with um, non-treated um, uh, percent incidence of black leg we got in non in treated uh, in non treated treatments we got um, 53 percent of incidence and you see well, like uh, intigo solo has 31 as the least but everything they are close to each other so th that means in Vercoras we got 36 percent incidence so yeah it is they are they are having a um, little bit of effect and also i was telling like it's a dry year and um, you know, there are a lot of things uh, uh, to take care of here um, over here so uh, the mo most of the times um, we can't get accurate results with c treatment trials but it's our uh, uh, the, uh, we have to put in more efforts to show that these these have some um, um, this is managing qualities uh, in terms of black leg. The next disease is all over the state is white mold uh, on canola. And what we did is like a, we tried an innovative uh, methodology, like um, controlling uh, a vectorite, using a vectorite to control uh, white mold. It's a, it's a very nasty disease and uh, the more... Um, it has uh, over 400 uh, broadleaf cropped varieties uh, as hosts, right? So uh, with something uh, novel we have to do, this uh, technology has worked in uh, worked on uh, sunflower. We have we have over six year or seven years of data on it. On um, um, the, it the, where it worked, we thought of trying uh, and also some uh, important some important personalities in our um, uh, NDSU were so curious to know if it is switched from um, a sunflower to white mold, a white mold on canola, how it will fare. Uh, I will present those details a little bit and also the conventional fungicidal evaluations. Um, here we we have a B boxes set up over here, and uh, uh, we conducted in a replicated trial, and the, we the distanced treated to non-treated with 100 meters, like a, uh, 100 yards, so like a football in between, so that the bees can't um, um, travel that long and um, some vector use them spread the vector right, so that the management uh, things can be uh, in, in, interfered. In Carrington, Michael Wunsch uh, has put in uh, the B boxes in, in here, like here, and uh, he had uh, di um, the different uh, distances from the box, and he calculated how the disease um, incidence is changing, and also yields what we are getting are changing. Uh, we used uh, B boxes uh, at bolting. Irrigation was provided. Asquospores we sprayed at 30% of flowering, and uh, the vector rate we used is Colonostarsis rosy. It's an um, 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 uh, fungal uh, pathogen, a uh, fungal bioagent which can control role, which feeds on other fungus. So here are the, my results in Langdon. You, know, you see that when uh, I used bees, uh, I have more incidence of white mold and uh, no bees, a little lesser. And um, the conventional pro line we used where we got little 
um, um, incidence of um, less than 30% of incidence of uh, white mold. That means fungis, fungicide is still is the better option in our area, but um, the bees uh, somehow it's not working. We, we conducted this trial. This is our second year of research. And both years the same. The, the bees didn't have any effect as it as we saw on uh, uh, sunflowers. And uh, the, again, the yields uh, again the proline treated ones we got more yield, uh, which yielded around three uh, three thousand two hundred pounds and um, less than uh, no bees. We that is no treatment applied. It also fared well. It's somewhere close to. 2,800 pounds per acre. Uh, this bees where we used, it, it is so less, I don't know what's happening, but uh, this is uh, uh, what we observed. Uh, then um, in Carrington, um, uh, as I mentioned, um, bee, this, uh, suppose at the zero feet, we have the bee boxes. As we go on, the, um, uh, the yield has been decreasing. This is what Michael Wunsch has uh, uh, observed. So uh, wherever we have the bees and the vectorite, he says um, he found that uh, there are more eels uh, as it, uh, the distance from the, the bee boxes increases and the yield is lowering. And also he, he didn't get any disease last year because it was dry year. So it is quite understandable. From, you know, we couldn't make any inferences in Carrington in terms of disease control. Uh, the, um, this is the most uh, uh, important one, you know, fungicidal evaluations, which our farmers like to um, hear. Um, uh, as we see, like um, in our area, uh, over 10 years of experience uh, uh, with canola over here, I felt I feel like in, we have to go for one fungicidal application around 20% of flowering if it is a wet year. If it is a dry year, you know, still we can, um, if some farmers who don't want to risk, there are some chemicals like uh, uh, topsin, which is a low end chemical, but it is working, still working good for us. So I feel like uh, recommending to uh, tops in like in a dry year, like the last year or before year. And um, nowadays it's a trend. Um, uh, every um, uh, Lots of chem chemical companies wanted to uh, test uh, um, uh, chemicals of theirs, which they are making combo products. And um, you, you can see this here, uh, propuls, which is a uh, fluopyram and prothiaconazole in it, and preaxer, fluoxapyrod, and pyroclostrobin in it. And so that that kind of um, combo products are coming, and we are um, testing them. And th th still, th they are working very good. See here, look at the propulse incidence, what I called, and mean disease severity. It's very low, So and the yields are also pretty good. Uh, the, and um, the similar way, preaxer, it's also very good, just lower by 200 pounds. But topsin being um, long, uh, it has been in the market for so long and it's still working. Um, and then Endura. So I feel like um, um, recommending for farmers with these options. We have a lot of options over here, but um, still I feel like um, to to Topsin and Proline are working very good and um, you, you have options. You, you, you are a good judge and uh, uh, you can choose from among these uh, a list of chemicals that are available in white mold. Uh, here, you means the growers. The, then the next thing is uh, club root on canola. It is um, in eastern part of uh, Cavalier County. Um, every year we are surveying uh, since it's um, uh, observed in uh, North Dakota. Uh, we, we do we do the survey, then we do the varietal evaluations, and we do the rotation crops. Uh, uh, and uh, there are some uh, two more objectives which I am not mentioning, but um, I still do uh, a lot of research on club root resin. Uh, club root visual service, the visual means presence of galls when canola plants are uprooted. Last year, we found only one, one field um, with galls um, in that, but it's not a mm, commercial um, canola, it's just um, at, at random some uh, weed. Um, it's a weed, um, as a volunteer canola. So you know, on that, we found galls.
So here, um, it's already a, a decade, a 10 years since it has been identified in our county. Uh, it, we it has been identified in 2013, and it's still showing up a little bit. You know, If the farmers are not vigilant, it would have been more um, rampant over here. But the uh, thing is that I thank all the growers who have been uh, um, part of this management in, of uh, Club Root over in our area. They did very good with the longer crop rotations and use, um, making use of the available resistant varieties. So that's uh, that's working in our area. Uh, this, then the as part of the uh, this survey, we also collect uh, soil samples. We last year we also received samples from Minnesota. None of the samples had uh, any. Um, um, resting spores in here. Uh, with the soil samples, I send it to uh, uh, Fargo where they do the molecular analysis to find the DNA in it and uh, they can come up to an estimate that how many resting spores per gram of soil are present in your soils. So that in 2021, we have did um, this survey in 48 counties. We found club root resting spores and the soil is term, uh, has more acidic, but the, the results are changing every year. So I was surprised to see that you know uh, again uh, in from cavalier county if you see that we we have around 45 percent fields with rusting sports in uh, 2020 and 2021 um, there are some counties without um, uh, spores also the results of 2023 of my soil science uh, you know um, soil samples uh, in cavalier we're out of 22 um, uh, out of 30, 22 fields have club root resting spores, and that ranged from 17,000 to 807,000. And uh, uh, the percentage of positive club root fields we have is 73%. Per so, yeah. So in that way, you see the rest of the counties, we did, we went for maximum five or six, and still you see like in Walsh County, out of four, three of them have resting spores. And um, yeah, in Grand Forks, out of um, five, we have two of them have, uh, uh, so so on. You know, every county we uh, visited last year and collected soil samples, they had resting spores. But uh, here is the question, why they are not showing up in uh, our canola crop? Either the grower is using resistant variety or a basic pH. You know, SD, Club Root um, likes um, acidic pH so much. So here are the 84 fields last year we surveyed the pH results, you know. Uh, it ranged from um, 5.2 to 8.2 from the canola fields, which we have collected across 12 counties. Uh, the base Out of uh, 84 fields, 55 fields are have basic pH, that is 65%. So if, if some resting spores have identified in these fields, none of them going to, you know, um, express their sub symptoms on uh, um, canola plants as galls. Uh, we have neutral pH 6.6 .6 to 7. They, we, we can still see a little bit of um, club root. Uh, uh, out of 84 fields, we have only four. Um, out of 84 fields, we found 25 fields is uh, acidic, um, and we, that, that is 30%. If these 30%, if you have uh, resting spores and you, if you plant a club root resistant susceptible variety, you will see uh, club root galls and club root incidents. Um, over the years, for uh, over six years, we are testing uh, different canola cultivars um, uh, that are mo most uh, commonly used and also every year uh, in uh, BASF or cropland genetics, uh, they are introducing new chem varieties. And they are they send the, a little bit of uh, their soil um, seed sample and ask me to some evaluate their samples in the field and uh, look at this. Uh, last year it was dry. Usually the in uh, susceptible um, checks I get around hundred percent, but last year it was dry. I got the in infections up to, um, in the in BS of susceptible check L two thirty three P. I got fifty four percent of uh, CRDI that is club root disease index and uh, some. Uh, and uh, crop class genetics, it is a susceptible one too. I got 42%. And the rest of the um, resistant varieties behaved very well. And uh, if it is resistant, it is resistant. So it's a good news that uh, the, the varieties uh, haven't been overcome by the club root pathogen. Uh, there is a, a student I have in Fargo when we have an objective like uh, after you have a club root in your field and you have planted a susceptible variety of canola and uh, which variety will be uh, 
which um, crop will be a suitable crop for you to like um, we tried some the more major crops in our area soybean canola on canola canola on wheat canola on flax um, so, sorry uh, soybean on canola canola on canola wheat on canola flax on canola and field pea on canola and also we tried that uh, after planting soybean last year and again go for susceptible canola so on uh, on wheat canola susceptible canola flax on canola field pea on susceptible canola what uh, what will it be like and uh, she is the student uh, who worked in our um, is working on this uh, uh, objective so here are my results. You know, the, the, uh, we started with collecting uh, soil samples at the start of planting uh, after canola has been planted in the previous year. We had around 200,000 spores. Uh, we have planted soybean. At the, after soybean, at the end of the season, when we collected soil samples, we got 50,000 uh, per some gram of soil samples. So there is quite a bit reduction. So on, uh, still look at this canola and canola. Uh, in canola, on canola, where we have 200,000, and on um, at the end of the season, we we had around 300,000 uh, resting spores. So on, you know, the next best crop was flax. Uh, uh, then, like here, we started with uh, 200,000 uh, spores. At the end of the season, we got around uh, 125,000. So yeah, there is something we thought uh, we can work on it. You know, it's uh, uh, the other researchers also say that um, uh, it's best to have soybean after um, club root reserve club root uh, on the, in that field uh, like when we planted uh, on the same uh, rotation crop on the so same ground uh, where we had soybean where we had reduction of spores and <laughs> we planted canola and it uh, susceptible canola and it shot up again back to what it was like so yeah it's uh, um, like we will be having that it doesn't matter that uh, you know you, like last year we have a reduction of population or so one yeah, this it's like it's, um, th um, drives back to the th basic question basic uh, thing finding like uh, one gall can produce billions of spores in canola so you know the spores will be obviously more the new disease of which I wanted to strong talk is what's what psyllium stripe on canola. You see this stripe, you know, one one side you will see greenish color, the normal color, and the other side is um, you know grayish yellow or something, uh, brownish yellow. This is the um, um, reason they have named it as what psyllium stripe. And the good thing is the the, uh, the pathogen is what psyllium longisporum. Uh, it infects only brassica crops, They're like uh, any other um, um, the like a club root of uh, canola. You know, it can infect only brassica crops. The same way, this is also only infect brassica. So when it is a new um, disease, what do we do with? You know, we wanted to do how far it has been um, uh, finding. We are finding this verticillium. So we did a survey and. Uh, C treatments uh, and remember there is no uh, uh, resistant varieties or C treatment options available to manage this disease. So we, we are trying. Oh, there are some new chemicals they are introducing. Why don't why don't we test those C treatments? Whether we have any efficacy on the uh, what psyllium stripe? The same way a varietal evaluation. The new version commercial varieties. Are there any resistance to what psyllium stripe? Nobody knows. So we want to test. So th this is what, you know, this is a rare uh, symptom on the leaf. You say well, half leaf um, yellow and half leaf uh, greenish. And um, again, I showed half stem yellow, half stem green. And when you cut open, you will see this um, um, light brownish color. This is the, again, you everybody will be confused with um, um, black leg. If it is so dark, that will be a black leg. If it is brownish light, it is um, what psyllium stripe and also what psyllium stripe um, 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 produces one more stream when you peel the outer epidermis you will see black uh, pepper like spores underneath that is microsclerosia which is a overwintering structure of this disease uh, again this is what i'm mentioning what psyllium when you cut open at the collar region you see light brownish color gray grayish brown color for black leg, it is really dark color. The pith is really dark color. And this is the non-treated control. Very, it's very clean. So that is how you differentiate from black leg to verticillium. Again, the, what is the what psyllium uh, disease cycle? You see the microsclerosia. This is what uh, uh, we I'm mentioning about the small pepper-like structures. They are released into the soil, and uh, when the uh, in the spring 
uh, when we plant crops at very early stage, the roots uh, are coming off and uh, there will be um, root um, exudates will be released. Based on that, the, this um, uh, gets a uh, these microsclerasia germinate and infects, and the infection spreads upwards. If it is black, like the infection go, comes black, downwards for um, uh, vertcelium, it grows upwards. It plugs the, uh, the nutrients and the water holding structures, and uh, it produces half stem uh, um, uh, symptoms, that is the vertcelium stripe, and uh, also sometimes grayish like structures and um, uh, symptoms too. And again, when it is um, um, they die, the microsclerasia microsclerosia uh, and the residue released into the soil. That's how they overwinter in the, um, and by the way, it can also live for so long in the soil and it can infect uh, for any longer of time. So uh, even if you don't grow canola for so many years, it may show up after five years too. Uh, in our survey, we, we were able to go to 12 counties last year, you know, where everybody is going for, uh, um, uh, uh, Everybody is going for a direct a direct cut, and we couldn't uh, focus on you know do it fast. So we were able able to go to eleven or twelve counties. Out of twelve counties, we found in eleven counties uh, have what psyllium stripe, even though the inf uh, incidence levels are very low, less than five percent. Uh, like uh, uh, again, we tried uh, what psyllium stripe management trials with the inoculating the trials in summer. Uh, and uh, again, the, we tested the same chemicals uh, the, which we used for black leg, and um, the, none of the chemicals have any effect on um, um, verticillium management. And uh, again, the verkeras, again, here it showed me the highest yield. And by the way, uh, when I checked with um, um, the BS of people who supplied this chemical, they don't, they are not happy with this epic efficacy of this chemical. And they say that they are not making this chemical available to either black leg or um, what psyllium management. So um, keep it, keep that mind in that point in our mind. Saltro is available and the rest of the chemicals. And again, the same way, we tried different cultivars. None of the cultivars showed resistance to what psyllium stripe. Uh, the, the, we went to, I, I was in Sydney, Australia for an international um, uh, rapeseed crown congress last September. And this, this show that even black leg infection can have up, infect upper uh, canopy parts like flower peduncles and um, parts and everywhere. So uh, the, here, the last year when we were surveying, you know, this has also distracted me and uh, we are seeing a little bit higher uh, infections of um, uh, spots and uh, there are different things we showed it. So we we have, we were able to work uh, the, um, to, I think, to solve that problem in in our lab, um, nothing mm, uh, concerned. But it, uh, in our in our um, environment, it's very rare to see upper ca canopy infections. With this, I would like to con conclude my talk. Um, accurate diagnosis is very important nowadays. So the number of diseases are increasing in our area. C treatments have effect on black leg. The vectorite trial of BVT didn't manage white mold, so we are winding up that trial. We are not doing going for any more. Resistant variety is still holding good resistance to club root. That is good. And rotation with soybean or flax after a CR susceptible cultivar showed long lower resting spores. Vertipsilium stripe was prevalent in 11 of the counties which we surveyed last year. None of the chemicals showed efficacy to vertipsilium stripe the same way the um, um, cultivars. So uh, we, uh, we have a lot of publications on different diseases uh, if you want um, uh, contact me and i would with this i would like to thank everybody uh, finally from, uh, from mainly uh, uh, northern canola growers uh, um, to be backing up with the good funding so i could go um, in the areas and uh, in different areas and do the research and also the same way the growers and collaborators and uh, my um, uh, office staff, everybody chips in when I need help. Um, and uh, some state was kind enough to give me another research specialist to work on. Uh, the same way industry people, Christine and Courtney, and the um, Department of Plant Science, University of Manitoba, um, Dr. Dilanta Fernando's uh, lab. They all helped me. Thank you. I'll be happy to answer your questions. <laughs>